Hmm. Okay. Welcome guys, Naz is here. If you are new to Baldur's Gate 3, then I want to show you some of the tools which you can use in a fight. It is Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access, so the game will be significantly improved. Obviously spoilers for Act 2 ahead, so turn off this video now if you don't want to know about some encounters and characters. Do you remember how big and full of content original Sun games were? Well, imagine this, Warren's new creation has the potential to be even bigger, with them adding a verticality aspect to their world. It will affect not only exploration part, but also fighting. With this come new abilities, which you can use to your own benefit. Shoving Well, time to get stronger. Wars are fought with weapons, but they are won by men. We are going to win this war because we have the best men. And because they are going to get better. Much better. Are we gonna die here? Why am I so dead? So these guys are level 5 and the maximum level is 4. I got the good gear and I still lose? What's that? Huh. Houston, we have a problem. This ability is especially useful in the early game. For example, you can pick up a lot of oil and wine barrels and throw them at the enemy's feet. Add some fire and you've created a nasty surface which will surely slow down the guys who want to punch your pretty face. Baldur's Gate 3 even allows you to throw your own equipment at the enemies. Oh, and you can use almost anything as a deadly projectile. Even squirrels. Jumping. Do you want to get access to a distant area or maybe even create a shortcut? Well, my fast friend, the new jumping ability will allow you to do so without any drawbacks. It can be also a big help during the fights. Dipping. Enemies can't hurt you if they're already dead, so more damage equals less problems. Luckily, you are allowed to dip your weapon into the fire or poison and increase your numbers like that. You know the cool part is that you can be more creative. Don't just run towards the surface like a baboon. Bring some candles or poison flasks and use them as the dipping sources. And last but not least, rolling the dice. Fire. Except for only... 16? Maybe. 
<laughs> it's a seventh attack. Eighth attack, which misses. Wow. So what it was all about? Well, let's do a quick summary, shall we? All mentioned above abilities except for throw are bonus actions, which you can do after your main action like attack or spell casting. If you encountered strong enemies, which you can't be by normal means, and you have access to a high ground, I would bait enemies to come after you and then use shove to do a massive amount of fall damage, which most of the time will be bigger than your normal abilities in Act 1. Jumping is very situational though. You can get away from a big pack, but also you can get prone and take full damage. Nonetheless, you can jump behind an enemy and use it to increase your accuracy because of a backstab. Tipping is a viable source of getting extra damage. It can be easily overlooked because you'll have to spend your movement to get to the dipping source. But splashing poison and putting down candles can solve this problem. Oh, also do not be overconfident even if you're winning the fight, otherwise RNG will spank your precious butt. That's it for now, you have a good one, peace!